Okay, so this video is going to be focusing on electron, whoops, electron configuration and putting it into subshells. So we know that we started off with this Bohr model of an atom just being this two-dimensional thing. And now we're moving over to the atom looking more like this. So if you watch the Big Bang Theory, you see this all the time, but this atom is like a three-dimensional thing now. And so because we've gone from 2D over here to 3D, we are going to need to use a different way of explaining like what this looks like and where the electrons are. And so for that, we use quantum numbers. So quantum numbers or quantum is the study of subatomic particles. And so we're looking at um, protons, neutrons, and electrons. So that's what quantum means, the quantum numbers. You should recognize N as your principal quantum number. And it talks about the size. L is the angular quantum number. And that's going to discuss the shape. And so this is what we look at in terms of like the orbital. So where your electrons are actually being like what area of the atom they reside in. So this is talking about the orbitals, which is like the general area for electrons. Okay, so from these quantum numbers, we start to look at where the electrons actually are. Where the electrons actually are are the subshells, and we abbreviate those S, P, D, and F. And subshells, like my example of a football stadium, so the shape of this stadium is going to be L. How big this stadium is, so if it's arrowhead, it's going, that's going to be the N quantum number. Uh, if it's where Lincoln plays, it's going to be much smaller. And then subshells are like your seats, okay? So think about it as like, we'll say that this is your football field. Here's the 50 yard line. This seat right here is going to be the best seat because it's as close to the 50 yard line as you can get. So this 50 yard line in atomic terms is gonna be your nucleus. And then this subshell is where your electrons are very happy to be sitting, okay? So subshells are like the seats where the electrons actually are in this whole orbital, in this whole space. So we talk about this whole, this idea, this concept of like where are our electrons and why this is important is because we wanna see what a valence electron is. So valence is anything, any electron on the outside and we care about valence electrons because these are what reacts. Sorry. And if I could spell reaction, there you go. So that's why we care about valence electrons because these are what are reacting. Um, so you have your valence electrons that are gonna go on the outside. So like think about your Bohr model. If I had an electron right here, this would be your valence electron. This right there is a valence. So we care about what's reacting and to do that, we wanna look at, we wanna take all of this information Right, all of our quantum numbers, we wanna take the idea of like a valence electron, like where our valence are, and we put it into, take all of that information and make an electron configuration. So this is what all of this is helping us get to, this electron configuration down here, telling people where your electrons are and what's a valence electron, what's not. So if we look at something like, I'm going to pick chlorine its atomic number is 17, which means it has 17 protons and 17 electrons. So I'm going to use the diagonal rule. So 1s, 2s, 3s, 4s, 2p, 3p, 4p, and you're just lining them up with same number and same row. Okay, so I need to place these 17 electrons into the proper shells. And we use the diagonal rule because we want to keep track of off bows principle, which states that we put things in the lowest subshell, the lowest energy subshell. And so this 1s 
up here is the one that's closest to the 50 yard line, okay? So we wanna put things in the lowest energy subshell as close to the nucleus as possible. That's where these electrons like to be. So my diagonal rule, I'm gonna make cross, and I know that the S orbital, so these S subshells can hold two. This one is my N, my size. How big is this orbital? So one S2, second line, two S2. Third line, go all the way to the S orbital. Some of you were messing that up on your homework and I wanna make sure that you go all the way back. So 2P6, so right now I have 10 electrons placed. 3S2, start back over. 3P6, 4S2. So that is gonna be, whoops, I didn't need that many, sorry. I just needed to 3P5. So whenever you're done, make sure you stop yourself. And that makes sense because chlorine is in that P block. And we have P, D, and S. So chlorine's in that P block of uh, electrons, or of elements, sorry. So you wanna put chlorine, you wanna make sure you're ending with a P. So now I can see that chlorine has the P orbital, it's in the P orbital and it's missing one electron in this valence shell. The way I see that is I do my diagram. So this is 1s, 2s, 2p, 3s, and 3p. So if I want to see my electrons, I go up then down. That's Hun's rule. So I'm going to fill each of these lower orbitals first. Here I'm going up and then coming back around, up, then down. Okay, so I filled all of my electrons. I have all 17, each of these lines is an electron. I see that I have one unpaired valence electron, so this is going to be very reactive, which makes sense because chlorine is a halogen and we know about halogens, they're very reactive. And this is also going to be paramagnetic because it is not, it's missing all of its pairs. So if everything had a pair in this valence shell, it would be diamagnetic. Okay, so kind of a long video, but hopefully you stuck with me going through all of what we've been talking about on Friday and Monday, and this is what's going to be on your quiz on 9-26. This will be on your quiz. So make sure you said yeah. Have a good night, guys.